Hi, this is Ipek Oskar Deshkaya, Market Analyst at London Capital Group. We are going to discuss on what's going to happen next week in the markets. We are heading into a light economic calendar week. However, the corporate data is going to be in focus and might uh, impact the market across uh, across the US and, uh, and Europe. We, uh, Greece is going to still be under close watch as the EU countries and the Greece are, are, are getting very near to an agreement to continue talks of a third bailout program, we expect Greece to be able to pay its debt to the IMF and to the ECB by Monday. As soon as we have the confirmation of the 7 billion euro debt paid on Monday, we might expect to start the week with uh, a relief rally across the European markets. On the euro, we still have choppy trading. We don't know if uh, Greece staying in the eurozone and the uncertain future of Greece in the eurozone, despite the bailout agreement, uh, is a good or bad uh, thing for the euro's fundamental value. This is why we might expect to see another two-sided trading week in the euro complex on the euro dollar. We have hit the 10856 levels on the uh, after the uh, the ECB uh, press conference. Uh, now we are just like looking to uh, that base, which has been a double dip on hourly chart, in order to see if a uh, a bearish extension is going to happen or not. Uh, on Monday, we will have a quite light economic calendar. In the morning, the German PPI is going to be in focus. The German producer prices are expected to have slipped below 0% in June. The consensus is minus 0.1% versus 0% released a month ago in the afternoon. The Canadian wholesale sales are going to be in focus. We do not expect any particular price action in Canadian dollar after uh, following the BOC decision to cut its uh, bank rate by 25 basis points, which has already hit the Canadian dollar. Now, the dollar CAD is continuing to uh, is continuing its way north to 130. Once the, this mark is going to be breached, we expect more. Uh, we expect the extension of weakness in Luni, depending on the quality of the U.S. data this week. On Tuesday, RBA is going to release its meeting minutes. We expect RBA to keep its dovish tone, as especially now that the other commodity currency, uh, commodity sensitive currencies are moving back towards an unorthodox uh, policy phase. Uh, in in the RBA meetings, we expect to see uh, to see the RBA officials to leave the room open for further rate cut within the in, within the year, especially to counter the weakness that come with. Uh, soft commodity prices and the slowdown in China. In the UK, the UK public sector finances is going to be in focus. The public sector net borrowing is expected to have fall from £9.46 billion pounds to £8.7 billion pounds in June. On Wednesday, the Australian inflation figures are going to be under close watch. The Australian CPI is expected to have to have strengthened to 0.9% on quarter versus 0.2% previously. Even if the strong, uh, the strong inflation uh, read in Australia will not be enough to push the Aussie dollar above its 75 cents level most probably because as mentioned before the RBA is expected to keep its tone quite dovish in order to sustain and support economic growth despite the slowdown in China. Again on Wednesday, the BOE minutes is going to be under close watch. We expect at least two out of nine members to have shifted to the hawkish camp and ask for an, uh, for an earlier BOE rate hike that might be uh, before the year end as uh, as Fed is also moving uh, toward a rate hiking cycle before the year ends. So now we expect that at least two members will also be joined by uh, the BOE governor Carney. In which situation we might see uh, we might see a bounce uh, in the pound against the dollar and the euro. We expect the euro sterling to remain under 70 cent level uh, and the GBP USD to continue uh, its north. Uh, path uh, 
in the extension, extension of the bullish reversal. Later in the day, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is going to announce its cash rate. Uh, the the Kiwi has hit 65 cent level during this week for the first time since 2007. We expect a 25 basis point cut from the RBNZ on Wednesday on the back of the on the back of the softening commodity prices. This is where we are going to see that all three banks, the BOC, the RBA and the RBNZ, shifting toward an easing cycle and we might expect additional rate cuts during the year which might come before the, before the Fed starts its hiking, uh, its, uh, its uh, normalization cycle. On Thursday, we are going to go back to Japan with the trade balance expected to have written a surplus. Uh, the yen weakness is slowly translating into the trade terms, which is very good news. But on the policy side, we expect that the BOG is going to be quite satisfied with the with the levels of the yen, uh, at the current levels of the yen, which means that no additional stimulus will be expected in the immediate future. This means that the dollar yen should stay into its range bound trading, uh, range trading bound, and the 125 levels still has some mixed option, uh, option calls and puts at this level. If we go about 125, we might see uh, another, uh, another high, uh, upside momentum in dollar again but we are still uh, going to look at the critical uh, resistance at 125, 85 and 126 resistance zone. On Friday, the manufacturing PMI figures will be in focus. The most important one is going to be China, which is expected to remain in the contraction zone, meaning below 50 threshold. In the EU, US, and the, and the UK, we expect expansion to continue in the manufacturing sector. However, the, uh, however, if we see any surprise, uh, any surprise in these figures, we do not expect to have any significant price action uh, related to these numbers because it is just going to be about China and the Chinese growth. Thanks for listening to the week ahead. Have a good trading week.